this is afia mary department of chemistry from st anne's college for women hyderabad hello students hope you all are, all are fine so in this video i'm going to explain adsorption types of adsorption differences between the two types of adsorption and also one of the adsorption isotherm equations named as freon lich adsorption isotherm so to begin with first let us know what this adsorption is okay the spelling a d s o r p t i o n so generally uh, we hear about adsorption which is a b s o r p t i o n but this is a different topic which is called as adsorption so how do we define adsorption adsorption is nothing but it is a phenomenon in which one substance exists on the surface of another substance in higher concentrations than in the interior parts is called as adsorption okay girls so here one substance substance exists on the surface of another substance in higher concentrations so underline that word in higher concentrations on the surface than in the interior parts okay therefore we call this adsorption as a surface phenomenon fine now what is meant by the regular word which we hear almost daily that is adsorption so entirely uh, it is uh, quite opposite so therefore in adsorption if we see the existing substance is concentrated more in the interior parts than the surface of the other substance okay so there the substance is concentrated in higher concentrations on the surface whereas in adsorption the existing substance is concentrated more in the interior parts than on the surface so now i think you got the difference between adsorption and adsorption okay so leave this adsorption in this chapter we are going to learn more about adsorption fine now so in the definition of adsorption we have seen one substance on another substance so what are these two substances named as so one is the adsorbing bulk substance which is called as adsorbent and the other one is which is being adsorbed on the surface of adsorbent that is called as adsorbate okay so the adsorbing bulk substance is called adsorbent and the substance which is being adsorbed on the adsorbent is called as adsorbate so many examples are there here in this video i have uh, quoted one example that is the ethylene gas which is adsorbed on nickel so nickel is the adsorbent and ethylene is adsorbate fine now there is also a process in which where adsorption and absorption both the processes takes place that phenomenon is called as sorption okay so how do we define sorption the process in which adsorption and absorption takes place is called sorption and the other process in which adsorbate is removed from the surface of the adsorbent okay that is also one more process so that is named as desorption fine so sorption is uh, the process in which both adsorption and adsorption takes place and the process in which there is removal of adsorbate from the surface of the adsorbent is called as desorption so this is a short introduction about adsorption now moving on to types of adsorption these are classified into two types so how they are divided into two types they are divided into two types depending upon the types of forces that exist between adsorbate and adsorbent okay so basing on the types of forces existing between adsorbent and adsorbate there are two types of adsorption so what are they physical adsorption and chemical adsorption 
So physical adsorption is also named as physisorption or van der Waal adsorption. So what is physical adsorption? If the forces existing between the adsorbate and the adsorbent are weak forces, then the adsorption is called as physisorption. Okay. So here I have mentioned that if the adsorbate is held on the surface of the adsorbent by weak forces, then the adsorption is called physisorption. And the example, gases which are adsorbed on second type is chemical adsorption, which can also be called as chemisorption or Langmuir adsorption. If the forces existing between adsorbent and adsorbate are chemical forces, then the adsorption is called as chemisorption. So here I have mentioned, if the adsorbate is held on the surface of the adsorbent by chemical forces, then the adsorption is called chemisorption. And the example I quoted here is hydrogen gas adsorbed on nickel. So, Next, moving on to differences between the two types of adsorption, that is physisorption and chemisorption. So, the first difference is nothing but the definition which we have learned in the uh, previous topic, that is in types of adsorption. So, the forces existing between adsorbent and adsorbent are physical forces under physisorption. Whereas uh, under chemisorption, the forces existing between adsorbate and adsorbent are chemical forces. Okay. Next, second difference is heat of adsorption is uh, generally low. What is meant by heat of adsorption? The amount of heat evolved during the process of adsorption is called as heat of adsorption, which is very low in uh, physisorption and it is in the range of 20 to 40 kilojoules per mole. And under chemisorption, heat of adsorption is generally high, which exists in the range of 40 to 400 kilojoules per mole. And the third difference, it forms multi layers because of the weak forces existing between adsorbate and adsorbent. In this adsorption, we find multi layers on the surface of the adsorbent. And under chemisorption, it can form only one layer. Therefore, it is said it forms monolayer. Why? Because the forces existing between adsorbate and adsorbent are strong chemical forces. And the fourth difference, it is not specific. So, the adsorbent can adsorb any gas, whereas chemisorption, it is specific, which means that the adsorbent can adsorb specific gases only. Coming to the fifth difference, it is reversible. That means desorption is easy. So, in the previous topic, we have seen what is desorption. Desorption means removal of adsorbate from the sur surface of the adsorbent. Whereas, in, under chemisorption, it is irreversible which means that this option is difficult. Removal of adsorbate from the surface of the adsorbent is difficult under chemisorption. Next, coming to the sixth one, it occurs at low temperatures. Chemisorption occurs at high temperatures and physisorption occurs at high pressures and chemisorption occurs at low pressures. Next, moving on to adsorption isotherms. So, which word immediately comes into your mind when you see this word isotherm? So, constant temperature. Okay. So, how to define an adsorption isotherm? These are the curves which explain the extent of adsorption with pressure at constant temperature. So, these are called as adsorption isotherms. So, once again girls, the curves which explain the extent of adsorption with pressure 
at constant temperature are called as adsorption isotherms. So, what is extent of adsorption? That means how much uh, uh, part of the surface is being covered with the, the adsorbed molecules. That is called as extent of adsorption. Now, these are of uh, two types. First one is freon lich adsorption isotherm. So, what is this freon lich adsorption isotherm? Freon lich is name of a person who proposed an empirical equation which was obtained by plotting a graph between extent of adsorption which is denoted by x by m and pressure keeping the temperature constant. Okay. So, what did he do? He has proposed an equation. So, how did he propose the equation? So, he could derive an equation by plotting a graph between extent of adsorption which he denoted it as x by m against pressure keeping the temperature constant. What is this x by m in extent of adsorption? X is the amount of the gas adsorbed by m grams of the adsorbent. Okay. Now, so this is the graph uh, obtained by plotting uh, extent of adsorption against pressure. So you can see this uh, uh, figure here. So what did he infer from the graph? So uh, students look here on x axis he has taken pressure and y axis he has taken x by m which is nothing but extent of adsorption. Okay. So from this gra graph he could infer that at low pressures, you can observe that the graph is almost straight, not exactly straight. He has quoted that it is almost straight or nearly straight and hence satisfies the equation x by m proportional to pressure to the power 1. So, anything to the power 1 is uh, the same value. Okay. So, x by m proportional to Pressure to the power 1 or P to the power 1. Next, at high pressures, X by M is independent of pressure. So, you can see in the graph at high pressures, so the graph is going constantly. So, no change at high pressures. Therefore, he could infer that X by M is not depending on pressure it's going straight that is the value is constant and here the graph satisfies the equation x by m proportional to p power 0. What's the meaning p power 0? Anything to the power 0 gives the value 1. Okay. So, for equation sake he has mentioned x by m proportional to p power 0. Okay. Now, so at low pressures uh, he inferred at high pressures he inferred. Girls, uh, students uh, underline this one at low pressures x by m proportional to p power 1 and at high pressures x by m proportional to p power 0. So now coming to intermediate pressures. So from the knowledge of low pressures and high pressures we can say that x by m is depending on pressure to the powers 0 to 1. Why? Because at high pressures it is proportional to p power 0. At low pressures it is proportional to p power 1. So obviously at intermediate or moderate pressures x by m depends on pressure to the powers 0 to 1. 0 to 1. What are the values that exist between 0 to 1? All the decimal values. So, we can write it in the form of a fraction that is 1 by n. It might be 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4, 1 by 5 and so on. And hence the graph at intermediate pressures satisfies the equation x by m proportional to p power 1 by n which is called as freon lich adsorption isotherm equation. Okay. So, what is freon lich adsorption isotherm equation obtained from the graph? It is nothing but x by m proportional to p power 1 by n. Now, 
So immediately after uh, proposing an equation from the graph, it has to be verified experimentally. So going to the experimental verification. So take the above equation x by m proportional to p power 1 by n. And if we remove the proportionality, there comes a constant x by m is equal to k into p power 1 by n. Now, by taking logarithm on both the sides, we get logarithm of x by m is equal to logarithm of k into p to the power 1 by n. So, it's in the form of log a into b which can be made equal to log a plus log b. Therefore, here log k plus log p to the power 1 by n it becomes equal to log k plus 1 by n log p. Why? Because log m power n is equal to n log m. So applying that to our equation log k plus 1 by n log p. So now, so the final expression log x by m is equal to log k plus 1 by n log p. Now this is in the form of a straight line equation, you all know that y is equal to mx plus c is called as a straight line equation. So, in the above equation obtained from experimental verification, y is equal to log x by m, x is equal to log p, m is equal to 1 by n and c is equal to log k. So, what is y here? y is y axis x is x axis, m is the slope, c is the intercept. So when a graph is plotted between log x by m and log p, a, a straight line is obtained with slope 1 by n and intercept log k. So in the upcoming uh, video, I will explain the second uh, type of adsorption isotherm which is uh, Langmuir adsorption isotherm equation. So kindly watch this video, note down the notes and like, share and subscribe. Thank you.